Uh, thank you, Chairman, and thank you uh, and to Senator Peters for holding the hearing. It's very important. It's timely. Obviously, all of us want to see our Postal Service work and work well. And let me just uh, give a shout out to David Janus, who's our letter carrier, and to all the letter carriers and all the postal workers, because I do think particularly during this pandemic, uh, they're more appreciated than ever. And so the men and women who you lead, uh, Mr. DeJoy, uh, please pass along to them our, our, our thanks. Um, I like having this hearing now because I think there's been a lot of misinformation out there, and I like getting to the facts. One of the facts I've learned this morning is that you started 67 days ago, and much of what we've been talking about in the in the media, at least, including the blue boxes and the sorting machines, uh, you know, that happened before you got there, and it was part of a plan. I knew the former postmaster general. She came up through the ranks, um, was not a political person at all. And uh, anyway, that's that's helpful to know that that's what's going on. It's also helpful to know that you were appointed by the Postal Board of Governors uh, and that that's a bipartisan group. In fact, uh, we confirm those people. And uh, it was a unanimous selection. And I guess it's based on your being a, a logistics expert. And just hearing you this morning, I can tell you got a passion for the logistics side of things. Um, I also know that the long-term financial picture for the post office, uh, postal service is not pretty. And by the way, that's been true for a long, long time. And that's not really something that a postmaster general can do much about. It requires legislation. Uh, Senator Collins, Senator Feinstein have a bill as an example right now that provides for some reforms and some additional funding. Uh, everybody knows it's in trouble. Everybody knows we've got to deal with this issue. And so, uh, although I'm going to ask you some some tough questions and others will, uh, really, a lot of this comes back on to Congress and not doing its job uh, in terms of the longer term of financial picture. But the immediate issue is to be sure that these elections work well. And I appreciate the fact that you said this morning that that's going to be your top priority between now and the election. Every one of us on this panel, I hope, want to be sure that we have the ability to have an election that is uh, well run, where people have their votes counted and many are going to be using the Postal Service. Let me start, Mr. DeJoy, by just asking you a general question. Do you support absentee voting, and do you support voting by mail, generally? Um, I'm, going vote, I'm going to vote by mail. Yes. I voted by mail for a number of years. The Postal Service will deli deliver every ballot and process every ballot in, 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 in time that it receives. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that. So you, you do support voting by mail. I do. That's yeah. interesting. <laughs> I think the American public should be able to vote by mail, and the Postal Service will uh, 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 will, uh, will 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 su will support. It. So I guess that's yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. I mean, the, the states are going to decide this, not uh, not the Congress or not uh, the Post Office, and and many states are going to do it. I mean, in Ohio, we've had absentee voting for a couple decades now. That's no fault, meaning that uh, you don't have to give a reason, and it works quite well. Uh, I vote every year uh, by absentee uh, because I don't know where the heck I'm going to be in Washington or in Ohio based on our schedule. So it's worked well. And, uh, you know, we also are going to have in Ohio a lot of other ways for people to vote. We're going to be sure that it's easy to vote in Ohio and it's hard to cheat in Ohio. And I think that's, that's the important thing. There's been a lot of news coverage about the Postal Service sending letters to 46 states, including Ohio and D.C., to let them know they can't guarantee all ballots cast by mail will arrive on time. Is this due to a lack of funding, which is what many are saying, or is it due to state laws on voting and the time it takes to turn around receiving and delivering the ballots? Uh, Senator, the, uh, this was not a change from anything that we have done in previous years. It was just more, more, more detail and more emphasis put on it, uh, uh, mostly because Partly because of the expected rise in vote by mail, and also the uh, uh, the, the pandemic, and what uh, what the team set out to do is make the election boards and then eventually the American public pretty simple. You know what are, what our processes were, and therefore to guarantee that you if you follow these processes, there was no extra Herculean efforts on our part to get your ballot in, which therefore mitigated the risk of it potentially not getting. There. Yeah. So the mailing. Well, I think I think that's important to note that this is something that has been a problem for years, including previous elections. You sent out warnings in previous elections, 
And look, I think the post office has got to coordinate better with state election systems. I think state election systems has got to coordinate better with the post office. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, in, in Ohio, as an example of, you know, the time frame between when you can cast your ballot and when it is postmarked uh, and you can get a ballot as, as, as late as Saturday before the election and, um, you know, to get that to the post office and back to you and then date stamp before Monday is very hard to very hard to do logistically. I think that's one of the things that your letter pointed out was to these state systems, be sure and leave adequate time. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. First of all, it was not my letter. It was a letter from uh, our general counsel. But yeah, pointing out all the different uh, variations that we could experience and how fast we could process it. But yes, there are times we get the ballots. Ballots were sent uh, out uh, the day before the election. It's almost impossible to for us to uh, for the voter to vote for the for the for the ballot to get to the voter for the voter to vote and for it to get back in time for the for the election. So this was uh, a, a very very well thought out effort to safeguard the election, not to get in the way of uh, safeguard the processing of uh, ballots, not to get in the way of it. Uh, what advice would you give voters? This is an opportunity for you to speak to uh, the voters of Ohio and the country. Uh, would you advise them to wait till the last minute? Or would you advise them to leave, leave at least a week? The general word around here is vote, vote early. Vote, yeah. vote early. I think that's really important to tell people because, you know, it, again, under Ohio's law and a lot of other laws, the time frame is really close. If you request an absentee ballot, you got to be sure that it can be delivered in, in time. Uh, I am concerned about the delays that we have seen in Ohio and elsewhere. Uh, we have a number of veterans who've contacted us and said they weren't able to get their medication. And there's some just heartbreaking stories. Uh, one is a 70 year old served in Vietnam, has COPD, has trouble breathing. The inhaler uh, refill was mailed through the Postal Service due to delays. Uh, he ran out of it while waiting for it to arrive. And then his insurance said, you know what? We're not gonna pay for another refill to be filled because it's already been shipped through the Postal Service. And he can't afford to pay for another emergency refill personally. Um, let me ask you about that, particularly the veterans medications that are shipped through, through the mail. Are you focused on that issue and what can we do to correct that problem? Uh, Senator, first of all, I am, uh... Uh, we are working here feverish, feverishly to get uh, 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 the, the system uh, running in, 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 at stability and also to get more, uh, uh, hire more workers to handle the delivery uh, uh, process. And it is, uh, we're, we're all uh, 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 feel, you know, uh, bad about, you know, what the, uh, the dip in our service the level has been. We, we serve 161 million people. Uh, we still deliver at 99.5% of, 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 of the time. We have uh, 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 significant efforts to, uh, uh, to continue to improve on, uh, on that process. And everybody is working here feverishly to, uh, 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 to, to get that right. Well, I hope, I hope you will, and let's ensure these medications are delivered in time and, and be sure that when the production doesn't meet the transportation schedule, as you said earlier, that there are some efforts uh, made to align those two because it's a lifeline for people uh, you know, mm -hmm. all over the country, uh, particularly in our rural areas. And uh, I thank you for your service and for the answers you've given today.